How's it going, fellas? I'm back out on the ice again in Sullivan County, and it's a relatively small lake that I'll be fishing today. The weather has been cooperating here in New York, at least. Last week, I was at uh, Norfolk in Virginia I am here and trying in to go Norfolk, fishing Virginia. out there. I, I did my best. I actually went out on the water and did a little bit of fishing, but the weather, it was just horrible. We had 35 mile an hour winds and it was wow. atrocious. I couldn't Great. do anything. So, uh, so I tried to take refuge and go fishing on a, uh, a portion of rocks that were sheltered from the wind. It just didn't work out. But here in New York, another go around at ice fishing. Hopefully I'm gonna catch more fish than I did last time. Only three, but not really much of a show. Just hope for better luck today. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and see how deep it is right here before I start drilling all kinds of holes all over the place. I don't wanna be in like maybe four feet of water and then drill so many holes. The idea depth that I'm trying to go for is about 14, anywhere from like eight to about 14 feet of water. That's where I've been having the most luck. So let's go ahead and get a rod down in there and see how deep it is. Then that'll give me an idea of where I wanna fish. It's definitely a fish. It's something small, but we'll see. They're definitely tapping it, so they see it. It's just a matter of me setting the hook on them. There we go, first fish. And it's a largemouth bass. Look at that fella. Right on top of the mouth, look at that. Look how red the mouth is. Finally, finally got something. I was thinking I was gonna get the big skunk, the goose egg. Let's hurry up and get this fella back inside there. Yes, no skunk for me. Let's see if there's any more down there. Uh, plenty of ice up here in the mountains, so uh, there's nothing to worry about there. As you go down, you know, further south in New York, it's uh, it's definitely questionable. There we go. Got another one. Oh, there we are. Now that is a crappie. Look at this huge slab. There we are. Finally, little little small bites. Look at this golden crappie. That guy. Whew, gonna have some big look at that big old back on him this guy is whoo my goodness he's ready he's ready for the fryer probably gonna do uh, take those crappie fillets when I fillet it up and do some fish sticks gonna stay away from the beer batter this time around and probably go buy some panko do some panko fish sticks look at this fellas Gosh, burn. this guy is a slab as well. Look at that, huge, huge slab. So what I managed to do was, uh, I just got lucky whenever I was drilling over here. When I drilled one hole and dropped down, I brought up a little bit of grass. I'm thinking that the grass has something to do with these guys being around it. So, man, I'll tell you what, fishing requires a lot of luck. <laughs> I've been lucky a time or two. So I've caught two, that's all I really need. I don't need any more. Uh, everything else that I catch, I'm gonna go ahead and give to the other guys that are uh, fishing here. There it is. What I tell you, gets their attention, you dead stick it for a little bit, catch you a little bitty perch. It's this guy's lucky day because uh, he's pretty small. Three fish. 
<laughs> Fella, you want to go back the other way. There you go. I definitely want to show you guys this. On this little, I think it's a 1 16th ounce uh, tungsten uh, jig by Clam. Um, you want to bend that hook upwards with panfish. You always want to, you know, uh, bend the hook upwards because it be, if you try to fish it with the way it comes, you're going to miss a lot of bites. You bend it upwards and whenever they bite it and you just set tension, it's going to stick the bot or the top of their mouth and your chances of actually hooking them is going to be greater than if you don't bend that hook. And you said it's Sportsman? Swartzwood. Swartzwood, okay. Swartzwood. All right. Perch are getting a little bit bigger. Look at that beautiful perch. It's a shame it's too small. Let's go ahead and put it back. Here we are, just hit the bottom. I'm gonna jig it about four or five times off the bottom, try to get their attention. So whatever else is down there, just get them back over here. See if they'll uh, they'll continue to bite. I'm hoping to keep pulling them out of this one hole right here before I have to move and go to another. Let's just wait for wait for that bite. You got to be patient. That's two what two bass, two crappie, and two perch. It's not a bad day. Just keep moving that that jig around down there. Got an emerald shiner tied onto it. There you go. It's a small one. Oh. You ask for it and you shall receive. Yeah. That is a nice size perch right there. A fat little fella. Let's keep trying to get more. All right, so check this out. When I threw my perch over with the crappie, this is what he spit up. Take a look at that. And talk about trying to match the hatch. So you've got that minnow right there, same exact color as the minnow that I'm using from Berkeley. That is why they're biting right now because that's what they're feeding on. Try to keep it going. All right, we're at the bottom. Let's jig it a couple of times, get their attention, and then dead stick it. Jig it every now and again. Try to bring them in over here. Okay, right here we're gonna go ahead and let it hit the bottom, bring it up a little bit right there and then just dead stick it until they bite. <sighs> Didn't have to wait long. Did not have to wait long. Oh, a nice crappie. There we go. Catching slabs, catching some perch. It's turning out to be a nice day, fellas. Not as big as my other ones, but it'll still fit in the pan though. They're tearing this fella up, so I've probably got maybe one more fish hunter on him. And then once I catch that one fish, we'll go ahead and switch it out to get a new plastic because this guy is getting beat up. I guarantee that that plastic is not is not on there correctly. That's probably why they're not biting right now. Let's bring it in and let's see if it's on there correctly. If not, we'll go ahead and switch it out. Yeah. This is what I thought was happening. They weren't biting, but that's just because the the minnow is not staying on that jig in the correct position. So, I mean, I, if I was a fish, I wouldn't bite. Like, what the heck is wrong with that thing? Let's try to rehook it and see if it'll hold. If not, we'll have to switch it out. I don't know, we might get a little bit more use out of it. I managed to, to rehook it in a different position. 
get it down to the bottom and repeat the same process. Yeah, let's get some Pro Cure, put it on there. Ah, you know what? Never mind. Let's just get a whole new minnow because this thing is not holding properly. This is what I'm currently using. It's a little two inch power minnow, smelt color. I thought it was an emerald shiner, but it's a smelt. Works like a champ. You can match the hatch, then your chances of catching the fish are gonna be a lot better than just, you know, throwing darts in the dark. Oh, it's another nice perch. Fellas, take a look at how gorged these perch are. This thing is just fat. If I could feel my fingers, I could hurry up and lip him. Let's get this thing out really quick. Get back down there. There we go. This perch right here has got a fat belly full of these things right there. That's why they're constantly biting. We got the big old four inch fluke. There you go. Here we go. It's got a nice one on. Here, oh, it's a beautiful crappie. Oh, look at that. Look, look at, that. at that slab, fellas. Lou just came over here, drilled a few holes. A few dozen holes. And here we go. Everybody's gonna share in on the fun. That's a beautiful slab right there. Yeah. What are you using? It's like a Haley, uh, but it's with a wax worm. A wax worm. Look at that. Tip of the wax worm. It died again. Lou's having trouble with his uh, Vexilar. But there we know the fish are here. He's just got a, an advantage over everybody else because he can see when they're actually coming to get his lure. I don't know why it's doing that. It's like blanking out. Lou just hooked into one. He scared all the fish Sunfish. away, Lewis. There we are. That's a nice bluegill. Dude, you scared them all away when I hooked into that one. Here we go. Phil just hooked into one right after Lou. Another gill. Or sunfish. Well, fishing has kind of dried up, so I'm trying to uh, drill a couple more holes away from where I was at. You guys are hot on fire catching some some pumpkin seeds. Just trying to find crappie and perch still. There we go. Look at, look at this slab. This guy just started taking line so crazy. Look at this, fellas. That is a huge slab. Easily, easily 14 inches long. <laughs> Somebody's eating good tonight. Look at that. <laughs> okay, fellas. This is my last battery. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and end the video right now before I actually run out of juice. So it was a great day of fishing. Caught several crappie, uh, several perch, and a couple of largemouth, really uh, small ones. Awesome day on the water. I'm going to go ahead and keep two fish so I can take them home, fry them up, probably do some fish sticks with them. Uh, tomorrow I'm gonna head back out I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do I may come back out here and fish on the ice or uh, may head down a little bit further south and uh, to some open water and do some kayak fishing who knows I just haven't decided yet but uh, yeah great day on the water and never complain whenever they're biting the way they have been biting today several of the guys have caught uh, quite a few fish Phil back there in the background, he's tore up the 
pumpkin seeds. He's slaughtered them. And everybody else is catching onesies and twosies, so really can't complain about a day like this. Uh, I really appreciate you guys for watching. And as always, tight lines. Till next time.